The a7 III is the camera that made me jump from Canon DSLRs to Sony mirrorless. It was a huge jump at the time, but is the a7 IV that much of a jump from the a7 III when it comes to video? I'll be going over those differences and tell you what I think at the end. Switching between photo and video modes on the a7 III will retain the settings you had in the previous modes. The modes are treated differently on the a7 IV. Your settings and even custom buttons are different for each mode. I love this feature and didn't realize how useful this actually was until I was using the a7S III and went back to my a7 III. So this is a great addition to the four. When it comes to menus, the a7 III uses those older tab style menus while the a7 IV uses the new column style menus. The column style menus are much easier to use. Uh, this isn't a big deal if you use favorite menus most of the time, but overall navigation definitely goes to the a7 IV. When it comes to video, the a7 IV and a7 III are similar in low light situations. The a7 IV does appear to be a little cleaner. This is because the higher megapixel sensor and that 7K oversampled footage down to 4K makes it appear a little bit cleaner than the a7 III. The a7 IV has 33 megapixels where the a7 III has 24. More on oversampling later, but for now, the point definitely goes to the a7 IV. Moving on to the exterior improvements, the body of the a7 IV is larger and definitely feels easier to hold. It's easy to miss this when they're side by side laying on a table, but when you pick them up, you can definitely feel that the a7IV's grip and overall body are larger. I love this, so point to the a7 IV. The screen on the a7 III tilts, while the screen on the a7 IV actually flips out. I like this flip out screen because it's easier to film at difficult angles or if you're filming yourself, you can just flip the screen around and use the front facing camera to frame yourself up. I think this is awesome and this is a huge win for the a7 IV. When it comes to HDMI ports, the a7 IV has that full size HDMI port and the a7 III has the mini HDMI port. Those cables are harder to come by and just a little bit more error prone if you're using them with a monitor. So point definitely goes to the a7 IV here. For memory cards, the a7 IV has two UHS-2 slots and one of those is a CF Express Type A for those faster speeds and higher frame rates. The a7 III has two UHS cards. The a7 IV can be powered with the USB-C forever. While if you want to do that with the a7 III, you'll have to have a dummy battery and have a cable running to a power source. They use the same battery and overall the battery life is pretty great. I do love the fact that I can use USB-C and power the a7 IV forever like my a7S III can. Now moving on to the big improvements, first up is image quality and that is another win for the four. The a7 IV is sharper than the a7 III because the a7 IV uses that 7K oversampled image down to the 4K image. This is a big win for the IV. The a7 III has in-body stabilization and optical steady shot if your lens allows for that, while the a7 IV has all of those as well as active stabilization. The active stabilization crops in on the image just a little bit, but it does a great job at keeping the frame smooth. The IV can also record the gyro data and apply the stabilization in post with Catalyst Browse. A quick tip, keep your shutter speed a little bit higher if you're going to be doing this though. Point for the four. The a7 IV also has a feature called focus map where you can see areas that are in focus. It's a little wild to get used to at first, but it is a helpful tool if you don't have an external monitor where you can zoom in and use peaking. Uh, I've used this a little bit with my a7 IV, but I usually use it with a monitor. So for me, it's not that big of a feature, but if you are using something and you can't really read the peaking levels very easily, it is a huge win. The a7 III does not have this feature, so again, point for the four. When shooting with certain lenses, focus breathing can be pretty distracting. The a7 IV has a feature that will just remove focus breathing on supported lenses like it's just magic. It will cut down on that distraction and it is a really awesome feature. This is a feature I never thought I would see in a camera at this price point especially, and I would love to see this come to more cameras in the future, specifically my a7S III. I turn this feature on and use it for every supported Sony lens that I possibly can. This is a big win for the four. If all the other specs were the same from the three to the four, except for the autofocus, I still would have upgraded to the a7 IV. 
after getting used to relying on my autofocus of my a7S III that I'm using to film right now, going back to my a7 III just really kind of felt like a chore when it came to relying on the autofocus. The a7 III uses the face detect autofocus and that does work well, but when you start introducing any kind of HDMI out like a monitor or connecting it to the RS2 and RavenEye to film in 4K, that's when things get a little complicated. Either the back screen goes blank when you're filming in 4K, or you have to record on your monitor if you're using an HDMI to them. It's just a whole different setup, and it's nice to know that the a7 IV has made huge improvements to the autofocus, even when you're using monitors and recorders. One win that the 3 does have over the 4, though, is that since the 4 is oversampling that 7K image, all that computing power takes a lot, and it does heat up the camera more easily. I use both cameras on the high tolerance heat setting, and the a7 III has only overheated when filming long form content outside in the summertime, but not enough to completely shut off the camera. The a7 IV can overheat if you're using higher frame rates and codecs for long periods of time, and I have been doing some testing to try to figure out when I can film longer form content in 4K and not have this camera overheat. So far, I've been able to record a lot of long form content with this, and it still doesn't overheat, but there are some caveats. I'm working on that video now, so be sure to subscribe to be alerted whenever that video does come out. When it comes to choosing, obviously the a7 IV is a little bit better than the a7 III, but that's not to say the a7 III isn't a great camera. It can shoot great photos, 4K video, it is 8-bit, and it doesn't have the fanciest recording options, but for $1,300 on the used market right now, it is a fantastic deal. The 10-bit video, powering options, stabilization, flip screen, and autofocus are enough for me to confidently spend the extra money on the a7 IV, however. Here are some more a7 IV videos, as well as some videos about microphones I use for filmmaking. I think those videos are pretty helpful, but let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. As much as it pains me to sell my a7 III, it's been collecting dust after I got my new cameras, so it's already found a new home, and I can't wait to see what they do with it.